Hey guys, for those that I don't know, my name is Jeff, and um, I'm coming to you as a message uh, that was originally intended for group 10th graders. Uh, so welcome to all of you sophomores. We've been working together, walking through discipleship together. Um, but also wanted just to, to post this. I know sometimes families and some other members, maybe we post it on Facebook, others will hear this and may be interested. Um, but what I wanted to do is normally we would have been meeting together um, every couple weeks on Sunday nights, as you know. Um, and our next series we're going to talk about is heaven. And so what I wanted to do tonight is actually go ahead and, and put together a message. I'm going to do this about 20 minutes or so here. Um, and the original tent, as you guys know, normally we do some, we do some interactive and questions and things. But uh, this is obviously the, the format we have for right now. Uh, maybe we'll try a Zoom call later to do this. But I thought we'd try once and just kind of see if anybody pays attention or is interested or anything like that. So uh, let me pray for us. God, I just pray that this message would be used for whatever you have in store. God, that you would be glorified, that um, no one would remember my name, but that your name would be exalted. In Jesus' name, amen. So I don't know what you guys are thinking about um, as you're going through this time. Uh, you know, obviously, um, as students, there's a struggle because, you know, you're so active, you're, you know, your social life, I mean, all the things happening, no school, you know, video school, online school, you know, all those kind of things and adjustments that are happening. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to take some time and to really dive into heaven. And I'm going to use a lot of messages. I, I learned most of my learning. I, I've, I've done some studying and learning, but the way it was all put together, uh, David Jeremiah, a pastor in California, did this many years ago. And so to me, this just makes the most sense. So I'm going to use a lot of his material, um, the way that he organized it together to share with you. So um, the first thing we'll just start out with this is, you know, I don't know with current Corona and COVID and all these things going on, um, if it's changed the way that uh, you think about anything. Um, I'm thinking a lot of people are thinking more about death and about heaven and about hell and the afterlife and you know what's going to happen there. Um, as a matter of fact, I know I've heard over you know something fifteen thousand people gave their life to Christ online the first week and over twenty two thousand the second week. So God is moving and God is using using this situation. And so um, what He wants to do is to dive into heaven. And so um, if you're <laughs> familiar with you know science and everything there's all different rates on how often people die right and you know there's different rates on on the flu virus and the COVID you know 19 virus but I will tell you that there is a 100% chance that you will die the current death rate is 100% everybody who's ever lived on this earth has died and everybody who lives here now will die at some point, unless, Scripture says, Christ comes back and takes us to heaven, and we're, we're caught up to be with him. And Lord Jesus, come now. Amen. I'm ready. Um, I hope you're ready, too. So um, there's a current death rate, and right now, apparently, it's probably three people every second. So that'd be like 180 every minute. 260,000 people go die every day, right? And if Scripture's correct, if, if, if God's Word's correct, then 260,000 people when they die, they either go to heaven or they go to hell. Those are the only two choices. There's not an in-between. I don't know if any of you have grown up, you know, learning about purgatory and other, other things. There's a lot of interpretations and in, in texts over the years. But according to the scriptures, when people die, you're given one chance to decide. Um, and the result will end up in heaven or hell. So let's talk about heaven. You know, is, is heaven something that you're thinking about? Is it something on your radar screen? Maybe it is more now because of, of everything that's happening. But let's talk about this because... At the end of the day, at the end of your life, at the end of my life, the only thing that mattered is did you say yes to Jesus or did you not, right? Are you looking forward to what's to come? And I think part of the problem is, is so many of us think, oh, well, heaven's just, you know, some things like, oh, it's going to be so boring, right? We're just going to sit around on our harps and angels and do that all day. I'd rather be in hell with my drinking buddies and, you know, have playing cards and all the images that Hollywood portrays. But what we're going to find as we study scripture um, over the next however many weeks, whatever happens here with this, if not now in the fall or some other time, what we're going to find is that those are all lies. Those are not how scripture is laid out. And so God didn't come out and say, here's a full list of everything that's in heaven and everything that's going to be there. But as you fall in love with your scripture, as you begin to dive into it, as we've been talking about, uh, and you begin to know the text and learn and memorize, then you'll find that there are answers to all those questions in Scripture. And, and there's some things specifically that we can't answer um, out there, um, but there are intentions about what God is and His character, and we can, we, can, we can dive into what He has there. So the first thing I want to talk about is just this. It's just how prominent heaven is today. It's everywhere. There's books. There's series. There's, you know, it's mentioned in Scripture over 500 times. Um, you know, it's, it's discussed so much out there, 
and yet I feel like we know so little about it. Many people have not taken time to study it. They think, oh, Revelation's too much, or, you know, I'm going to heaven one day, and, you know, all those, that, that's all going to be settled, and I'll just be there forever and ever, right? Well, if you read Scripture the way that I interpret it, no, we're not. You, <laughs> you die, you go to heaven now, a temporary heaven, and then you come back to the earth with Christ. You live on the, on the earth for a while, and then you go uh, into the new heavens and the new earth. And so there's different views on that and different understandings, but I pray that you'll learn something new in the midst of the study of Scripture, all right? So the second thing I want to talk about is just uh, three heavens, right? Jeff, three heavens, what are you talking about? So if you have your Bibles, and I'm going to use a hard copy Bible because in our, our study you guys know that we do this. Anybody else who's watching online, I encourage you to do that as well. I do think it's a great thing to have it on our phones, and you can get a lot of interpretations, and I do that at different uh uh, translations that we use, um, but I also think it's so helpful to have just kind of these pages and being able to write on it and mark on it and just see it. So anyway, we uh, we are looking at Second Corinthians chapter twelve. If you want to turn there with me, and I'm going to read verse two through four. And this is Paul. So so Paul obviously uh, wrote most of the epistles in the New Testament, most of the letters, the New Testament book. And what Paul is doing is is he's telling us about one of his personal experiences. He says. Um, I will, verse, I'll start with verse 1. I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. So he has had visions and dreams and revelations. Maybe you've had some of those. God is doing that today. There's so many testimonies about how God is speaking to people in dreams today. I know a man in Christ. By the way, later we'll find out he's actually talking about himself. But just to give you the, the you know headline there. Who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. But God knows. Was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things. Things that no one is permitted to tell. All right. So Paul says, I went to the third heaven. You're thinking, okay, wait, wait, hold on. Heaven is just heaven, right? Well, if you look through scripture, um, there's different places. And so if you, if you talk about, if you want to just go to Genesis chapter 1 for a minute. Genesis chapter 1, and I'm going to take the time to actually just physically turn here, because I just think it's, it's good for us to do sometimes. It says, And God said, Let the waters teem with living creatures, and let the birds fly the, above the earth, above the vault of the sky. Okay? And in, in Isaiah 55, it talks about... Let me just get there. Now, obviously, I know some of you won't be able to turn quite as fast as I'm going through, um, so feel free to pause if you need to and, and find it. But Isaiah 55, 9 and 10. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Right? He says, as the rain and the snow come down from the heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and make it bud and flourish, so it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So this rain and snow come down from the heavens, right? So the first heaven we're talking about is, is the atmosphere, right? Is the heaven. When you look at the sky, you know, inside the scope, the earth, it comes down, and that's the first heaven that he's talking about, Okay? In the second heaven, then, if you go back to Genesis chapter 1, we talk about this, that in essence it's the sky, if you will, right? So the second heaven that he talks about is Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. It says, And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day and the night. Let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light to the earth. And so it was. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky, in the heavens, to give light to the earth. Okay? So the second heaven is basically what we consider to be outer space. Right? Well, we can see that's out there. The sun, the planets, the moon, the stars. Uh, I saw not too long ago. Love looking out when there's, when there's a planet rotating through. Um, and you can see it, you know, with your, with your eye without having to have a, a high-powered telescope. Um, and so those are, those are really neat things, right? But that's the second heaven that he's talking about. Right, but what is the third heaven, right? And basically, it's a place beyond those first two heavens, right? Um, and so it says, you know, well, well, how do we know about this heaven? What do, what do we know about where where is this heaven? So Matthew chapter six, verse nine, it says, uh, "This then is how you should pray: Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name." So you can ask Jeff, where is God right now? God is physically located in heaven, right? And we can go through this. Where is Jesus located now? We'll show some scripture later. But Jesus is physically located in heaven right now at the right hand of God. So they're sitting there on thrones. Revelation chapter 4. You can look it up and see an image of what's happening in there right now. 
Well, how is God here? How is Jesus in my heart? Well, he's here through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here on the earth right now, right? Um, but one day, this third heaven, right, where, where Paul was carried up to in this dream, in this vision, um, is where Jesus was and where God is. We also see, if you know the book of Revelation, John, one of the 12 apostles, um, he was the writer of that. So he also had this vision and also was taken up into the third heaven, even though he didn't use those specific words, right? Um, and so we see that this is where, where, where God is. This is where his throne is. And so when we're talking about heaven, we're talking about this third heaven. We're talking about this throne, where God is. It's beyond any outer space things we can see. Um, and that is where um, he is located, okay? So let's talk about heaven. Is, is heaven real? Like a lot of people will dismiss it and say, you know, I remember when I was a kid, you guys will laugh at me, but you know, you look it up if you want to. But a song that I liked as I was a teenager was, was uh, Belinda Carlisle. Ooh, baby, heaven is a place on earth, right? And if you're an adult and you're, you know, don't get that stuff, song stuck in your head. But, um, you know, heaven's a place on earth, right? Or heaven is if I could just be with that boy or that girl or, you know, that kind of thing that we say and casually. And sometimes people mean it. Sometimes it's just a, you know, just a phrase. But the reality is, is that heaven is a physical place. It's listed all throughout scripture about heaven being a physical place. Um, if you know your Bible, you may know John 14, uh, this is one of the most popular verses out here, right? Let's see. Oh, by the way, another verse from that from that day, more corrective verse uh, or song, I should say, from my generation was, uh, it's a big, big house. That's my father's house, right? Where we can play football, all those kind of things. All right, so, so John chapter 14, verse 1 says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. This could speak to all of us right now and where we are. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. So where's the Father? He's in heaven, in this house, many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I am going to prepare a place, a physical place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going, right? And so we see heaven is a real place. And Jesus is there now preparing that place for us, for our arrival one day, right? And this isn't an emotion, this isn't a feeling, this isn't fantasizing about something better. This is a physical location, all right? So I want to jump over to Ephesians chapter 4. So I told you that God didn't just lay it out all to where it's all in one place, right? You really have to dive into your scripture. Um, and anytime you have a question about something that you don't understand, I challenge you to dive into scripture because it'll find it. Uh, reach out, I'll be glad to try to help you find it. Find some, an elder, a parent, somebody that you know who can help you um, jump into this. All right, so Ephesians 4.10, um, this is talking about Jesus. Uh, we'll go to verse 9. Well, let's go to verse 7. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took captives. We'll come back to that later. Captives, um, um, these are people who died before Christ uh, was resurrected. And he gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe, all right? So when Christ died, he ascended. He went up to this place, to a physical place, all right? And we see also in Acts chapter 1, um, by the way, you know, people, this is just another thing that people are always so confused on, um, is, you know, well, how's Jesus going to come back? How do we know? How do we know it wasn't this guy or this guy who's claiming to be Christ or, you know, these kind of things? Read your Bible, guys. Acts chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. It says, they were looking intently... Up up into the sky as he was going. So he's, he's leaving his disciples. When suddenly two men dressed in white stood before him, he said, men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky, in the first heaven, you could say, the same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So he will come back down, descend from heaven, just like he did when he ascended from this physical place of heaven, okay? Um, Isaiah 14, 13 says, I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will sit in the mount of the congregation in the farthest sides of the north. Um, so heaven is a physical place, all right? And then I just want to finish this beginning one here by talking about reasons why heaven is where you want to be, all right? <laughs> and think about this. I want you to think about who's going to be in heaven, right? First of all, God is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven. Our Savior is there. That is where he lives. That is his dwelling place. And so he's going to be there. And can you imagine when you sit and see Jesus face to face? I mean, I, there's moments I get overwhelmed by that thought because I think of all the sin that I've done, every time that I've, I've fallen short, which happens all the time, I, I would say like Paul, I'm the chief of sinners. I mess up so much. Um, if you saw my life, you would say, 
no way I'm not going to listen to what he has to say. But I'll tell you what, Jesus has redeemed me just like he's redeemed you. And he's forgiven us. And one day I'm going to stand face to face and I'm going to get to see Jesus. And I'm going to say yes to him. I'm gonna, he's going to hold out his hands. I want to see his scars that are my, my sin. I want to see his piercings. I'm going to see Jesus in the flesh. And that's where heaven is. That's one reason that I want to go to heaven. Another reason that people want to go to heaven is because all relationships of people who know Jesus are going to be there. My great-grandmother, my grandmother who invested in me, they're going to be there in heaven. And I know that there's many who've gone before me, friends um, who, who are there now. I look forward, I say this a lot when I speak, that, I mean, just the reality, think about this. I'm going to sit down and talk one day with David I'm going to look down, sit down and talk with you know, a couple of my heroes in the Old Testament are Samuel and Daniel. Some of these guys who were written about, who are fit, you know, Bible famous, if you will. I'm going to sit down and talk to them and have coffee with them or eat a donut together or whatever it might be. And just listen. And, and he's going to want to hear. They're going to want to hear about my generation and what God is doing here. And I want to hear more of the inside story about what God was doing there. Daniel hid some things, by the way, in his scripture. You know, there's some things that are hidden and some things from John. And we we'll sit down with the Apostle John. Can you imagine and hear all his story? Um, and all those throughout who aren't written in scripture from, you know, the last 2,000 years. But we're going to be in heaven with these folks, right? It says our relationships are there. And if you want to know who those people are specifically, if you look at Hebrews chapter 12, wait, God told us who's going to be there? Oh yeah, as a matter of fact, he did. Hebrews chapter 12, it says, um, let me start in verse 23. It says, um, verse 22, but you've come to Mount Zion, so a symbol of, of heaven, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands and thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Angels are going to be there. To the church of the firstborn, that's the church after Jesus, that's, that's us who were born um, of salvation there, uh, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, right, he's there, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, those are the Old Testament saints who became believers through Jesus' sacrifice later, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So all these people are going to be in heaven, guys, we want to be there. Um, all of our resources are going to be there, right? Our inheritance, right? It, it talks in Scripture over and over about storing up treasures in heaven, right? So First Peter 1, 3 and 4 says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Every investment that we make for his kingdom is kept there. We want to be there, right? And then it says our residence is there, right? Philippians 3.20. Uh, it, it, <laughs> I love this passage because, you know, we have passports and, and they're not a lot of good right now because, uh, you know, there's a lot of places you can't travel to and a lot of restrictions going on. Um, but what it says in Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 20, it says, um, but our citizenship is in heaven. We eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. My passport says USA on it, but that's not right. My passport, my temporary residence is the USA. My permanent residence is heaven. That's where I'm listed. It talks in Ephesians how we're seated in the heavenly realms of Christ. Our inheritance is there. One day I'm going to this physical place. And so I want to be there because that is my residence. That is where I live. That is why I've been born again, to be there. Our rewards are in heaven, guys. We're going to spend a whole week talking about rewards at some point. But in short, it says, you know, there's a possibility of five crowns listed in Scripture. There's probably more that are out there. Um, but contrary to what God believes, you know, God is into rewards. And the rewards, the crowns are there so we can lay them at his feet. And we'll talk about that later. But there's rewards for those who are faithful and follow God. And we want to attain those rewards and get there. We want to be rewarded. We want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant, right? Our riches are in heaven, right? Matthew chapter 6. Look at this last one here. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. He says, Do not store for yourself treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, their heart will be also, right? This past couple of weeks, we've had major rushes on toilet paper, sanitizer, and all these things here, right? Most people try to store up heavenly you know, idols here, but God says, store up these things in heaven. They're going to be there one day, and your rewards are going to be there.
others, every time you tithe, every time you serve somebody, every time you do something where you give or you lay down your life, you may not think it's a big thing, God's keeping track. He knows these things and he will reward those who are believers there. Um, and the very last thing is just that, you know, uh, look at Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. Uh, God says in here, nothing impure will ever enter it. He's talking about heaven. Nor will anyone who does not does what is shameful or deceitful or those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. And so I want to end this by just being honest, right? Because in heaven, there's going to be so many amazing things and we're going to continue to talk about those in the next few weeks. But the problem is, is if you don't know Jesus, if you haven't said yes to him, then you're not going to be there. You have no reservation. You are kicked out. You're going to be thrown out into a lake of fire, which we're going to talk about, which is absolutely awful. There's no games, no poker, no fun time with friends. It's isolation and forever and ever, apart from anybody with pain and torture, amen. That's that's what hell in the lake of fire is actually going to be like one day. And so I want to ask you, close this by saying, do you know Jesus? If you don't, I want to ask you to pray with me. Um, if you uh, know someone who doesn't know Christ, maybe you want to share this with them or send this, connect them with what we're doing. Dear Jesus, if you don't know Christ, pray this with me. I realize that I don't know that I'm saved. I don't know that my sins are forgiven. I don't know where I'm going to go when I die. But Jesus, I believe in you. And I believe that you can forgive me for my sins. And so, Lord, I confess my sin to you. I confess that I've fallen short. I confess that I need you. And I ask you to come to forgive my sin, even though it seems so easy it's so hard for you. Would you come forgive my sin and come live in me forever? In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, please tell somebody about that because that, if it's truly just happened for you, then that means your eternal destiny has been changed forever. And you're going to get to one day sit with Jesus and all the people who've gone before who are believers, your brothers and sisters now, the people through your life that are here that have moved away, that you haven't seen in many, so long, people who know Christ, you're going to be there and be rewarded for the things that you've done, the service, the mission trips you've been on, all, anything that you do in the future. God is going to reward you for that. So guys, I hope you're excited about heaven. I'm excited about seeing what God does in the midst of this. Praying for you. In Jesus' name, amen.